Okay, so today we're going to do a brief introduction to flowcharts in the engineering student context for homework and things like that. Flowcharts are a really common way to describe the flow of a particular program diagrammatically, like in terms of a graphic. And you can find introductions to flowcharts in Wikipedia, in YouTube, on commercial websites like uh, the one that's listed right here. There's lots of information on this. It's been around for a really, really long time. So there's lots of very good background about this. Now, when we talk about uh, flowcharts, it's important to point out that there's really good software that you can use to create your flowcharts. PowerPoint is one, Google Slides, and there's other commercial applications and, and applications that you can find online as well. Lots of potential applications here for you to use. PowerPoint and Google Slides are probably the two common, uh, most common programs that you can use. You can see the Google Slides on the top and PowerPoint on the bottom of this particular slide right here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you use these two programs that you go into the shapes menu and then drill down into the flowchart subset of those shapes. You'll find that there's a section in both of those programs just for flowcharts and they'll help you because they are labeled as particular blocks for you to use like for instance the decision uh, diamond. All right, here are two examples of programs written in a procedural form, one in MATLAB, one in Java. This could apply to a, a number of different programming languages out there, new and old. Flowcharts are a very um, uh, classic way of representing uh, programs, especially procedural ones. And so here you can see that there is an initialization of a variable at the top called my variable. Then there's a for loop that occurs. Uh, it goes from zero to nine in MATLAB. It goes from zero well, basically up to 10 um, with Java. So basically they both iterate 10 times. And then there's uh, inside of that loop, the changing of the value of the variable. And then there's the printing out of that variable value. Now we can represent these in this flowchart manner. And you can see here that I've got a start point, that little circle thing that, that's right there, and an end point again, a terminator, and then you've got these rectangles as well that represent actions uh, done to particular, in this case, variables. And there's a print statement right there. And then as well, you can see that there's an arrow that leads from one block to the other. So basically, we're starting from the top. We end up at the bottom. We go through the arrows. We get to that decision uh, diamond that's right there. And you can see that it branches off where the decision diamond is effectively a question that's asked with answers that are either true or false, T or F in this case when the answer to that decision diamond right there is i less than 10 is true, then we iterate the value for my variable and then you can see the arrow that does that, that goes from the bottom where my variable plus plus is up to the decision diamond on the left hand side of that diamond. And it shows basically that we're looping. Okay, so that's a really good way of representing say a for or a while loop. Now, before you hand in your work, make sure that you consider changing your hand-drawn flowchart diagram, which is great for quick and, and dirty kind of representations of things, but formalizing it into something that's sort of computer-drawn uh, using PowerPoint or, or Google Slides or one of these other applications is generally a good idea, and that's what your instructor is going to be looking for. So you want to convert that into something that looks something like this. The shapes are the same, it's just a lot cleaner. And, uh, and in the end, it becomes a lot easier to update this as your algorithm changes over time. Okay, good luck everyone.